Ladies and gentlemen, when this program started, we had one person who would regularly come on to this program on Fridays, ostensibly to give me a movie review so that I could watch a movie over the weekend. And that person is featured in this theme song. Christopher Rosen of a MovieLine.com. That makes me a movie phone. Big shot senior editor. Up Eric Eric. Here is your theme song. You sit in a dimly lit room, watching movies, and you dress like a slob. I'm actually in an office now. Jimmy Reef of Cakes got to ask you, said, man, how'd you get that job? I said, how did you get that job? I think that was the first theme song that we ever had on this program. He is no longer at Movie Phone or Movie Line. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a, uh, what is your title? It's a managing entertainment editor at the Huffington Post. Managing entertainment editor at the Huffington Post, Chris Rosen. Welcome, Chris, uh, back like the prodigal Damn. son. Yes. It's been so long. It has been. The boss is very nice. I think it's been uh, close to a year. My understanding is, are you now married? I am married. I got married in July. It was a lovely ceremony. I guess your gift got lost in the mail, but it's okay. I, it must be somewhere sitting at the same place where my invitation was. <laughs> oh, your invitation must have got lost in the mail, too, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's probably at the same place. Where did you get married? Uh, my wife is from Oregon, Eugene, Oregon. So we got married in Portland, Oregon. It was a lovely ceremony and a lovely event. Good time had by all. That sounds, uh, yes, it sounds like uh, I don't doubt it at all. And now you're the managing editor of the entertainment. Are you the highest placed um, editor at uh, Huffington Post for this type of stuff? I mean, for entertainment stuff, yes. But not, I mean, come on, not for like real stuff. Wow, that's pretty prominent. How many people work uh, in that uh, vertical? A lot of people. We have about 10, uh, 15 people in that vertical. So are you, are you managing 10 or 15 people? Uh, yes. Wow. Wow. This has been... I know, you, you've right? really, uh You've really come into your own. Yeah, you know, that's how, I guess, you know, you fall up. I guess so. I mean, not even just fall. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. I know it. I mean, we all know what that saying really is. You fail up. <laughs> no, 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 no. No failure here, Sam. All right. Uh, fair enough. So let's... <clears throat> what are some of the more recent uh, things that you've written about? Oh, boy. I don't know. I wrote about a lot of Oscar stuff, obviously. Uh, you know, big year for uh, awards movies. Selma was very popular. I don't know. You know, so mostly movie stuff I kept my focus on. We have the Grammys coming up this Sunday. Uh, while you're there, if you want all your Grammys coverage, come to HuffPost Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And and do you go on uh, to HuffPost Live all the time and talk about this stuff? Not all the time. Uh, sometimes, though. It's a, pretty, it's a very nice setup down there, and they have a good staff and stuff so it's fun and uh do you when you when you find yourself there do you think like god all that training i got on the majority report that really helped honestly me. yeah like i mean like having all the wor world wor worldly experience being on your show really helped for sure i bet. They don't have as many good they don't have as many sound effects unfortunately which i always miss. and they don't they don't really actually ask you any difficult questions right i mean it's sort of I mean, I mean, it is what it is. What, what's difficult about the movies, Dan? These are fun movies. Well, I mean, you know, you and I, we had, uh, you know, things got a little bit uh, heated at one point in the past between the two of us because... That's true. You had sort of projected that you were a movie reviewer, and it took about a year for me to realize that that was not the case, that you'd been lying. <laughs> no, not a movie reviewer. I mean, does that ever come up? Like, did, uh, apparently nobody questions your CV over there at uh, Huffington Post. I never said I was a movie reviewer. Well, you did for a while, actually. I mean, but that's... We no, don't need, no, no, no. We don't I mean, need to get back you, in. I reviewed movies. Right. But you were just more... No. You were more like just writing about... Just like interviewing... Like, you do like the packages, right? Like, hi, I'm, I'm Chris. Thanks for joining me, famous person. Here's, uh, here's the three questions that I get to ask, and then somebody shuffles you out and somebody else comes in. Is that the way it works? Well, we do print interviews, so I'm not really doing video. So it's more like... You have a little bit of time with people. You can talk to them. 
you know, or write about a, you know, interesting topic in the film industry, you know, stuff like that, I think is. All right. Well, let's fun. let's go to this Oscars because apparently there's a lot of a uh, lot of controversy this year. You're not doing any uh, TV stuff, huh? Just uh, didn't you used to what do, do like a big Lost thing? Didn't you used to do that? Yeah, I used to do Lost for sure. We still do TV. Obviously, Hufflepuff Entertainment does a lot of TV coverage, but you know, it's, I, I still do some TV stuff. Yeah, you know, myself. Right. I'm watching a lot of Broad City. I don't know. Have you seen that show? It's really funny. I have. I know uh, Eric Sloven, uh, old buddy of mine, who's the executive producer of that show. Yes, that's pretty good. What else do really, you like really in terms good. of TV these days? Oh, you know, I'm watching Girls, another uh-huh. good show, I think. Uh-huh. Uh, Scandal. Uh, Love Scandal. Right. I watched Parenthood. Did you see that show? That was pretty good. No. No. Uh, you know, Parks and Recreation. Still love that. Right. That's your favorite show. Uh, that's do you, about it. Do you ever I watch Marin's show? Do you ever watch Marin's show? No, you know what? I don't. You but don't? I heard it's good. You never seen it? You have never seen it? No. Really? Now, no. why would you do that? You know what? I, why would it not like, even be like vaguely podcasts, interesting? I just, haven't, you know, I just haven't watched it. Come on, Chris. Are you being serious? I guess I could watch it. Come I on. am being serious, but I guess I could watch it. You've never watched it? Like, you used to work with the guy. <laughs> And you don't, I know, I know. I love didn't even occur to you to watch it? I don't believe you. I guess I'm lying. Then. Have you ever given a negative review to anything? Uh, yes. What? I don't know. I right. even like Jupiter Ascending, so that's what we're dealing with right now. Right. Okay. Because you can't really afford to, right? This is like that's this. No, you're like the like Golden Globes. Like. You're like the Golden, Golden Globes, aren't you? Right? No, no, I'm not like the Golden Globes. I, I've never taken. I've never gone on a trip to Las Vegas to see a screening of Burlesque, like uh, the Golden Globes did. Okay. My my thing with movies is Sam is that I want to enjoy this movie, and you know, I think if a film that succeeds on it, if it does what it sets out to do, that means that film is a success. If it kind of fails in that, I'll be mad at it, and I can dislike it. Right, but there's never been a movie that has failed in your mind. No, no, that's not true. Come on, I saw Mordecai. That thing is a piece of garbage. I don't even know what that is. It's a Johnny Depp movie. You know, it sounds to me like uh, like beet sweetener. That's what that's what it's all about for you. Beet sweeteners. With all I don't due, know what that means. With all due respect. All right, so uh, let's move to the Oscars. Yes, how many of these movies have you seen, Sam? Well, you're going to be surprised because I've actually seen two of them. Wow. Uh, because, Can uh, I guess which one? Because SAG sent me um, uh, um, a DVD. So I'm going to say you saw Birdman and Boyhood. Bingo. Wow. That is impressive. Those are the two that I did watch. I got Imitation Game, but I haven't seen it, and I lost it. I lost the thing. Uh, And I, I think I got Grand Budapest Hotel, but I think I lost that DVD, too. Well... We'll look forward to seeing those on uh, pirate sites, I guess. But yes. I'm All glad right. you saw the other two. All right. Well, so run it down for us. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight uh, movies. How yes. many? How is that? How many get nominated? Yeah, eight movies. It is how many get nominated. Okay, so let's start with. Well, Ed, uh, I can tell you, Ed, every year it's between five and ten. Okay. They, they do it on a preferential ballot system, so. It's a fluctuating number. This year, there were eight movies that got nominated. Okay. So, American Sniper. Have you seen it? I did. And? And I did not like that movie, actually. Wait, what? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. First of all, I mean, politically, I think it's, like, kind of just awful in that it makes very, it very casually just goes through everything, the events that led to the Iraq War and then the Iraq War, and then, you know, a lot of it, there's a scene where uh, Bradley Cooper plays Chris Kyle, the most lethal sniper in American history, according to his book. And there's a scene he's watching the September 11th attacks, and he's like, I, you know, we got to go get those guys. And the next scene, he's like enlisting in the Navy SEALs, and then he goes to Iraq to fight. And it's just like very casually conflating 9 11 with Iraq, and we know that's not true. So it's like a little kind of disingenuous and annoying, <laughs> to say the least. And then the film itself is, you know, it's okay. Well, I no, wait a second. Wait compelling. a second. Wait a second. This, I am, I am, I'm, 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 I'm thrown off my game here. This isn't, this isn't, uh, uh, you know, a typical 
Chris Rosen, Chris Rosen of, of, of years gone by would never complain about the, that, that type of political agenda. Didn't you? Uh, well, I mean, it's just kind of like a little, I, I, I hate when movies use 9-11 as a crutch and especially to tie it into the Iraq war. What like about little... 60, whatever that, um, the, the, the movie about the torture, the CIA one, whatever that was. Oh, that movie I actually liked though. And I don't think that movie conflates 9-11 with Iraq in the way that it does. Hmm. Wow, this and it's must also be just a really... better movie. I mean, the other problem is that you know I could forgive American Sniper for completely blowing through facts. When we get to the imitation game in a little bit, I will forgive that movie. That movie is like ninety percent of that movie is basically fiction and made up and like conflating what really happened. And it's still a really good movie, though. So it's like I could accept that it doesn't need to be historically accurate to be a good movie. The imit- uh, American Sniper ends up also failing because it's just not super compelling as the story and I never really, you never really get the feeling that like you never, it never gets past the point of why am I watching this character? And I know like Clint Eastwood and Bradley Cooper and the screenwriter have all talked about how it's, you know, a very anti-war and, and it really shows what happens to veterans when they come back from being in war. But that's like the last 15 minutes of the movie. And it really doesn't show that I don't think in any meaningful way. So it's kind of like pretty much not the movie that I think they wanted to make. I feel they think they made. like there are people listening to this live who are just sitting with their mouth agape and that there are people in the future who will be listening to this as it's uh, <laughs> consumed by podcasts who are just sitting there stunned now. <laughs> well, it's been a while since we talked, Sam. You know, I had a lot Wait, of what happened? What did, you, did your wife like, um, now force you to, to sort of actually be thoughtful about things? What's going on? Oh, I've always been thoughtful about things. You don't know. This is uh, it's pretty shocking. Well, you you out you clearly married up, Chris. I mean, obviously. And she's trying. Well, obviously, but I mean, she's she's actually uh, helping you. I mean, it, it, you know, despite as far as I'm concerned, it didn't matter really who you married. I didn't realize it would have this type of impact on you. This is impressive. <laughs> so American, so American Piper, I would say thumbs down, uh, and I don't think it's going to win. Obviously, but it's, it's certainly in the conversation. Okay, all right. Well, let's skip Birdman and Boyhood since I've seen those and we're going to get back to them. Grand Budapest Hotel. I love Grand Budapest Hotel. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Wes Anderson movie. You know, do you like Wes Anderson movies? Uh, Sometimes. Sometimes I think they're a little too precious. So this one's a little precious, but it's also kind of very very melancholy in a way that I don't think he's done since maybe like Royal Tenenbaums. There's a lot of sadness in it. It's about a basically like a Russian nesting doll of the story so it starts in like the present and then goes back to the 70s and then goes back to the 60s and then goes back to like the 30s and it all takes place in this fictional European country that's about to be on the cusp of like World War II and there instead of Nazis there are the ZZ is the the you know version of the SS and it's just very funny Ray Fiennes is in it he's amazingly good uh, it's a huge cast as you would expect from a Wes Anderson movie it's very clever, very funny, and like ultimately pretty sad. I think it's one of his better, you know, films, but it's not one of his my favorites of his films. No. Let's say that. Sounds like, boring. I still would sounds rather boring. watch like Rush Moore. All right, sounds boring. Uh, All right. The Imitation Game. I feel like I saw that back when it was called uh, uh, Chariots of Fire. Am I wrong? Or the King? You probably saw it when you saw the King's Speech. Honestly, uh, it's very similar. It's a you know typical Harvey Weinstein award season movie where it's a I very didn't see the King formidable, speech. What's that? Uh, you know, it's a movie that won Best Picture like three years ago. Never heard of it. All right. So, Imitation Game. You know, it's about Alan Turing, a famous code breaker uh, who was persecuted for his homosexuality and then ultimately killed himself. Spoiler alert! But that's like the real story. So, if you didn't know that, too bad. I didn't know that. Uh, well, that's how it ends. That's nothing um, like uh, Chariots of Fire at all. No, it's more like the King's Speech. I mean, that's a very good comparable. Did not see that. Movie. Uh, Don't even. And then you never even so heard of it. I think it's you know, there's a lot out there. I am uh, that you could read up about how it totally distorts the actual story of Alan Turing and is not very factually accurate. The one thing I read about way. it was that it not only was it not factually accurate, but it would use uh, language that was not used at that time by Brits. Like it would say, "You're fired," when in fact it would have been something more like, "You're sacked." Right, probably. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see that. You know, I didn't notice that. It's like one of those sure. things where they I'm put sure the they uh, the water bottles in uh, Downton uh, Abbey, right? Or one of those jobbies? Yeah, I mean, 
you know, but the problem is, I actually think this is a really good, all of that aside, like, I just think it's a good movie. Like, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know who he is? He plays Alan Turing. He's a fantastic actor. He's very compelling and very, it's a very tragic story. I just think that and name is made up. It might be made up. I mean, it sounds like a, you know, a Muppet character. Cumberbatch? But he's really good in it. Give me a break. Um, you know, I think the movie is really excellent. I just do. I think that if it was you know, the biggest mistake it makes is by being about Alan Turing. I think if they just made up a name and told this story about a World War II codebreaker, uh, a lot of people would be less angry with it than they are. But oh, people are angry. That's not what happened. Okay, so that's not going to win. You know, no, it's definitely not going to win. But Grand Budapest, is that going to win? No. No, that's not going to win. Either. American Sniper, you say no. Okay, Selma. Uh, lot, Selma's wonderful. A lot Have of controversy. Selma? No, I, I don't get out to see these movies unless they send oh, them to me in a DVD. Selma. Selma's the two best movies I saw last year were Boyhood and Selma. Those are my two favorite movies. Uh, Selma's a fabulous movie. It's really, really well made. Ava DuVarnay is an incredibly talented director who was not nominated in the Best Director category because she was snubbed. Uh, she, I think she should have been. She's incredible. The guy playing Martin Luther King is really great. David Oyelowo, uh, he was not nominated either. It's a great movie because it's kind of like, you remember Steven Spielberg's Lincoln? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of the way that film was about, like, more of the political process than about President Lincoln. This film is also about, like, the political motivations and process of, like, the march from Selma to Montgomery. And, you know, it's, like, that kind of, like, very cool, like, behind-the-curtain look. It's not a traditional biopic by any means. Uh, and it's just a fabulously entertaining movie that also is, like, very... Is that going to win? ...poignant and sad... Don't I tell don't me. think it will win, but, uh, you know, it should have, I think it should have been the one to win, but, you know, obviously I'm sure you saw all the controversy about the nominations and there weren't a yep. lot of diversity at this year's Oscars, yep. and I think Selma ends up not winning, but that's an unfair thing. The Theory of Everything. What is that about? I've never even heard of that. That is about Stephen Hawking and his oh, wife, Oh, that Jane one. Hawking. Okay, yes. I think I got that DVD, too, and I didn't... Uh... I didn't. It looked exactly like the Imitation Game to me. The the, the pictures. It's a little like the Imitation Game. This is what you would call a performance film, I would say. So yeah. like, both the actors are phenomenal in it, and the movie itself is like shrug. Okay, forget that. I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, Whiplash. What the heck is that? Whiplash is great. It's about a jazz drummer at a music conservatory and the abusive teacher who he wages like a war with over the course of the film. So it's kind of like mixes elements of full metal jacket and like officer and a gentleman, I guess, you know, that kind of thing where JK Simmons plays the teacher and he is very much like a drill sergeant, like berating his pupil until they like, kind of like come to blows and explode. And it's like, and that's very, how they become very, good musicians. That's what he says. Uh, there's a the famous line in the movie is the teacher JK Simmons says the only, the two most dangerous words in the English language are good job because he feels that, like, we live in a society now where everyone is told they're doing a good job, and then no one is doing a good job. So, well, you know, kind of, like, lowering expectations of society is, like, the biggest threat to it. But the movie's phenomenally exciting. Uh, the director is, like, a 28-year-old director. His name is Damien Chazelle. Uh, very up-and-coming. It kind of was, like, one of those movies that, like, is a calling card film. I feel like he'll make a lot of movies in the next decade that people will be excited about. Mm, that sounds to me like uh, somebody got invited to a uh, screening or something like that. <laughs> with all due respect, Chris, I'm not. I'm not in any way claiming that you're unethical. It just sounds to me like you're trying to get on board. That just sounds like a calculation on my part. I'm sorry. I mean, Damien, Damien, I mean the way you talk about it, it's like it's so exciting. He's at a conservatory. Really. All right. It's a great movie. Damien, if you're listening, you know, hit me up on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> I, I do. I, I have to concede now. that uh, Mila does take piano lessons, and uh, I stand over her with a swatch. And uh, if I don't think that she's, uh, she's reached a level of perfection, she gets a little tap on her wrist uh, with that swatch. I'm joking. All right, let's go to Birdman and Boyhood. You already said that Boyhood was one of your favorites. I find that astounding. Uh, why did you not like it? No, I loved it. That's why I find it astounding. Oh, I love that movie. It's absolutely brilliant. Now I'm going to go back and think, rethink about what I think about Boyhood because of that. <laughs> I mean, we have similar tastes. What? Are you kidding? Know. 
No. No. This is uh, disturbing. And what did you think of Birdman? I thought Birdman was good, not great. I liked it. I think it's very funny. I felt like the last half hour really kind of skipped. And I, my reasoning is because I love Edward Norton in it. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. And he's, like, very energetic. And the last half hour of the film, when he's not really in it as much, it kind of dissipates. And I didn't love it as much. Yeah, you know, this is really disturbing because I felt the exact same way uh, as as you did. And I got to say, I also... You know, I, I just felt like I saw the bone stick out of that one. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I could just, the whole time I'm watching Birdman, all I'm thinking is, these guys got into a room and said, I love wrestling, that movie by Darren Aronofsky. We need the wrestler. To, the wrestler. We need to do a movie like that, like where we can resurrect somebody's career, and it will also be about the resurrection of somebody's career. Yeah, that's true, actually. Uh, I never have, you know, this, you are a film scholar here because I haven't seen anybody compare The Wrestler to Birdman, but they are very similar, and the way they end is even very similar. Mm -hmm. They have very similar endings, very similar last scenes. So that's a really good observation, Sam. I'm impressed. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, Chris, I mean, I just felt like this was like, uh, these guys were just like, we're going to do one of those movies that we're going to find somebody, we're going to pull them out of the, uh, the dustbin and we're going to resurrect their career. And it's going to be Michael Keaton, which of course it seems to me he ruined when he got up at the golden globe and told that really stupid story about his, I don't know what it was like. I was born hard knocks. It was like the same thing as uh, what's his face from the wrestler, frankly. Yeah, they're very similar. I think Michael Keaton will have more opportunities, obviously, after this Oscar season than Mickey Rourke did because, you know... He's I not as crazy. People, I think more people like Michael Keaton than they like Mickey Rourke in Hollywood, let's say. so. Um, let's but, talk you know, about Boyhood. Let's. How awesome was that movie? That movie was phenomenal. Uh, I think it really hits home for people who are like, you know, grew up in the nineties for sure. And in the two thousands, I think the nostalgia feel is great when you, and Richard Linklater is the way he uses music in that film is like, you know, tells its own story. I thought, uh, Ethan Hawke is phenomenal in that movie. I don't think he's ever been better. Patricia Arquette obviously is going to win, I think, in the best supporting actress race for this film. Like she's the extreme front runner at this point. Uh, she's wonderful. The boy is great. I think technology, technical, uh, it's a technological achievement, I would say. Uh, it's just, you know, Richard Linklater makes really great movies about, like, just people living their lives. That's, like, his strength, I feel like. And this is, like, the ultimate version of that story. Wow. I cannot believe you get paid to do this. <laughs> that's I mean, it? that's because it's so good, right? You're that's like, wow. It. No, right. I'm saying, like, uh, you, you, the... the the, the, you just said, you basically just said, like, the movie's really good. Everybody's really good in it. Come on. Tease it out, I Chris. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about it, Sam? Well, I'll tell you what I thought was amazing about it. Is you're watching was this. Was it Ethan Hawke? Uh, no, I thought that all the performances were great. I loved all the performances. Uh -huh. what, what really struck me was that at about probably a half dozen times in the movie, maybe less, where you keep thinking, like, oh, God. Something horrible is about to happen right now, or something very dramatic is about to happen. When they're throwing, there's one scene where the the kids are throwing, you know, a spoiler alert. A saw blade. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they're 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 throwing a saw blade around. Or when they're driving at night, like all the things that you know you would worry about with kids as they grow up at different times. And you hear the horrible story about this kid, uh, you know, cut his arm off, or this and that there are moments in the film where you expect that to happen. It doesn't happen. And you realize by the end of this rather long movie, I mean, it's like a two and a half hour movie that the drama is in the aggregate of people's lives, that the drama is not necessarily in a moment to moment thing, but it is in the fact that life itself is dramatic just by its very nature in some way, that the most mundane, banal developments in a person's life when seen in the aggregate is, is dramatic as you look back on it, that the, 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 the movement of time is dramatic in and of itself and relentless. 
it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Do they pay well over there at Huffington Post or what? Do you get very paid for that? Uh, do they get paid? Very, very do you get paid for that? Or are they still doing it at the whole free thing? No, Sam. We have a Huffington Post has thousands of employees, you know, and editors and writers that we do really great reporting and work here. And the, there's also the blog network. If you ever want to blog, you know, let me know. If you want to turn that little monologue into a piece about boyhood, we'd love to. We'd love to host it here at the Huffington Post. Maybe I will. Maybe maybe I will do that. Uh, you have my email, or you can hit me up on Twitter uh, uh, with Damien Giselle at, at Chris J Rosen. Wait, what? It what Giselle? Uh, Damien Chazelle, it's a callback to the Whiplash director in case people listening. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, uh, so, so you're married now, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're managing ten people. Really? Come on. That's what it said. You know, that's it. That's how it works. So uh, now, are you do do you go into the office or what? Yeah, we have a we have a very nice office, a Huffington Post office. Do you have a corner and, office? Uh, no, no. I we sit. You know, I have to, you know I sit on a line of desks with the cube. You know. So you don't you don't have any. It's not it's not clear when someone walks in like you're the guy in charge. No. Okay. Wow. And you got ten people working for you. <clears throat> Are they all like in their like early twenties or what? Yeah, age range, ages range, you know, most 20s and, like, early 30s, that mm. kind of thing. Unbelievable. I just can't believe it. Talk about drama of time going by. It's really disturbing. It's like my own version of boyhood. <laughs> All right, so pick it. Who's going to win the Oscar? I think all season, Sam, I've been thinking boyhood would win, but I actually think Birdman is going to win Best Picture. Oh, that would be uh, that would be a travesty. I Bird think what they're going to end up doing. Go ahead. Birdman is a total like gimmick movie in my mind. So I think what's going to happen is because it's such an actors movie, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like you know speaking to an experience that probably many actors have felt mm -hmm. from either being out of dated or just even the way that he talks about critics in the film. Yep. You'll recall that scene where he blasts the film critic. I feel like that's going to speak to a lot of Oscar voters in a way that Boyhood might not. But I think Boyhood will get Richard Linklater an Oscar because people will look at Boyhood, like you were just saying, the aggregate of time and the Directing. You know, what he does, and he'll win Best Director, and Birdman will win Best Picture, and that's how they'll split it this year. Interesting. All right, so quick, run through it. Let's hear your predictions. Best actor, who's it going to be? It's going to be Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything. Ed, oh, that guy playing, um, okay. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking's Best actress. Julianne Moore for Still Alice. All right, Julianne Moore, Still Alice. Never even heard of that film. Uh, Not direct, a lot of people have, but they like you know, Julianne Moore. Directing, you said Boyhood. Uh, actor in a supporting role. J.K. Simmons for Whiplash. Oh, all right. Oh, there you go. And uh, actress in a supporting role, you've already said Patricia Arquette. Right. She's definitely going to win. She seems to me to be one of the leads. Wait, where's the well, best, where's best little, actress? Oh, we did that already. Julianne that. Moore. That's a little controversial. That's what they call that category fraud in the industry. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, Patricia Arquette certainly is a lead character in Boyhood, but you could argue that she's a boarding, I guess, you know, but... You know, that's what they end up doing. It's easier for her to win as a supporting actress, I guess. Documentary feature? Are there really only four documentaries up for the best documentary? No, there are five. Uh, hang on, let me find it here. Citizen Four, Finding Vivian Mayer, Last Days in Vietnam, The Salt of the Earth, and Virunga. And you haven't seen any of them, have you? I actually have seen Citizen Four. I thought it was really good. Um, I don't think that's going to win. I think it's going to be Virunga. Look at that. I love how you pick it without even seeing the documentary. You don't have to see the movie, Sam. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand the way it works over there. Chris Rosen, it has been a pleasure. It's been a little bit disturbing, too, i got to say. Likewise, Sam. Can't say enough. All right. Well, um, let's do this again. Um, I'll talk to you in a year. Okay. I'll talk to you in a year. Take okay. it easy, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.